always searching, always looking out for a little bit of hope and inspiration and some joy to come. So thank you for joining me. Let's go have a look, see what's in bud and what's in spike and find ourselves some beautiful blooms while we're at it. Right out of the gate, we're going to start with my Cymbidium Vanessa Ambrosia hybrid crossed with Cymbidium Sugar Magnolia. The three spikes are coming along beautifully and two of them are showing nice little beach ball styly buds. Bias Tancanvillier, surprise, surprise. These spikes started far too soon for my liking, but here we are, they're still doing well, so I am hopeful. What I'm trying to make sure this time of year is to protect my fires from any kind of ant invasion, simply because these blooms apparently attract ants, which bring the aphids, etc., etc. But so far, we're doing really, really well here. What you can expect, please subscribe to the channel because the future of the patio is looking bright, beautiful, and full of nubbins on my Dendrobium Nobly No ID. Totally going bananas. It's going to be a beautiful show and it's going to smell gorgeous of freesias on the patio. Something I cannot share with you, but I can definitely share the bloom spectacle with you when the time comes. This orchid is being fertilized, even though I only am at the nubbin stage because she has been in active growth throughout the winter. So consider it an experiment. You know, it's always said that Dendrobium nobili orchids should not be fertilized until you see the buds actually pushing from the nubbins. Well, this orchid has had nothing but fertilizer throughout the winter because I like to push any new growth and make sure that those new growths are are my priority. Should be exciting to see if I get a whole gaggle of cakeys or we are going to see those beautiful blooms or maybe both. While on the subject of Dendrobium nobilis, this is my variety Cooksonianum, which I got from Fernando Nathimento Orchids and Succulents. We are in for a treat. She is absolutely going bananas with nubbins all throughout, but she's also getting fertilized because she has been in active growth throughout the winter as well. But this year, what I'm going to do in order to hopefully secure our beautiful Beautiful bloom show from this Cooksonianum is I've situated her right next to the Nobly No ID because last year something came out of the hedge and started to chew away the nubbin so we only got a partial spectacle. So far everything is looking and going according to plan. Maybe we'll get cakeys, maybe we'll get blooms, maybe we'll get both. We shall wait and see. The new growths are doing really well considering the temperatures. It's been wonderful to watch. Also on the patio, something that is happening for the first time, not a first time bloomer, but for the first time I've only got one spike out of the expected leaf joint of my Ascacentrum Ampuyathea Pink Dreamer. Usually I get a pair, one left, one right. This year, however, the orchid has decided to show us something that I've never seen before, and that is she is insisting on growing two spikes, but the other one is way down at the bottom of her stem. That is super interesting, but very, very welcome. So two spikes so far with her, and I hope that she will bloom out. Usually we get aphids with this orchid, which is very difficult to control because these blooms are so tiny, but fingers crossed, we shall wait and see. Please give this video a like for my Oncidium Twinkle Red Fantasy. She is pushing out an itty bitty teeny weeny tiny little spike. <laughs> Doesn't get any smaller than this on a twinkle. But on the second bulb that she matured after my rescue attempt with her by mounting her in 2023, behold, she's also starting a new growth under the growth that already bloomed for us previously. I may only get three blooms out of this spike because I'm moving this orchid in and out every day when it's sunny enough. But anyway, I think she deserves a like as a form of encouragement because, hey, she's still around. And goodness me, she has been through a lot. Very, very happy to show you the development of my Ancelia Africana Buffalo crossed with Leo Spike. The only single spike that I can see at this point in time out of my four Ancelias. I don't know if any of the other ones will bloom, but it sure is nice to see how this spike is a little bit of its own monstrosity. It is just insane. And maybe we're going to have some bud blast because all my Ancelias are outside, no matter the temperatures. It's a test. See how they fare. But I think there are enough buds on this spike. I think it's going to be beautiful regardless. 
And I am well, well excited with the activity on the patio with my ridiculous Lelias. Honestly, I cannot believe what's happening. So thank you for indulging me and giving me the opportunity to tell you that Lelia Flava is in spike, doing beautifully. But not only that, Lelia Harpophila is also in spike. I'm just going to forgive her that we only got one new growth out of her throughout the 23-24 season, but we're going to get three blue blooms bar any mishaps. A first time bloomer is going to be Lelia Kolnagoy. Look at this orchid. It is absolutely exciting and thrilling for me to see this one come onto her own. I got her as a gift from my current orchids and Tokyo World Mark and she jumped right into her semi-hydro setup and she will be a first time bloomer for 2024. Now the first time bloomer, applause, applause for Lelia Guanense. Look at this, look at this. She was a pathetic little orchid when she arrived. Oh my goodness, it was not really a fight, but it was more a matter of patience. And here we are. Look at what she's doing. Look at what she's doing. Let me just say, if any accidents happen, at least I know we have reached the blooming size stage of Guarense. I do not anticipate any accidents, but <laughs> you never know. This is so thrilling though. Another one, another one. One is my Mantecare. Look at this. She is also going to be a first time bloomer. I'm so excited. <laughs> It's amazing how these spikes are starting to form. If they were all to maybe bloom at the same time or eventually bloom so that eventually I have a little grouping of Rapiculus Lelias all in bloom at the same time, that would be so amazing. I don't want to get all emotional, but I'm starting to tear up. <laughs> this is, oh, I love it. And you know what? I still have Lelia Crispilavia in bloom. So some Rapiculus Lelias are absolutely very short-lived in their bloom but this one has now been in bloom for at least four weeks and it's looking gorgeous. So I think she will be out of bloom when the others come into bloom, but so, so pretty. Very excited at the progress and the developments of my Rapiculus Lelius, but we're not done yet. <laughs> Lelia Lundii, my little bowl of goodness. I'm going to show you the progression of her three blooms to now we have seven on the go. It is just darling. So happy. This orchid is loving her little bowl of semi-hydroponics, even though it's a headache for me <laughs> to not spill over when I'm watering the plant. Can we just stick to the Rapiculus Lelia theme? Sort of, kind of like-ish. <laughs> Leilonia Joyce Hilton, the spike that I have been documenting. I got this orchid in spike, so this is not because of me, but look at them blooms. This is the first time I have something that is a semblance of a much, much desired Lelia rubescence on the patio. Well, in the grow space, but because she's new, she's acclimating. I left her in the grow space, but look at the blooms. Look at that large lip. So now eventually, hopefully one day we'll get the rubescence to bloom. But this is a special occasion. Warrants cartwheels around the patio because after all these years, I have something akin to a rubescence in bloom. So excited to share this with you. You probably saw behind the blooms that there was a spike peeking out. This is one of two from my Oncostella Wildcat Golden Red Star. The orchid herself is not looking that great, but it's nice to see that she's trying and she's got the blooms going. I'm gonna let her bloom out, but she's like still on a rescue mission. Her pseudobulbs are very shriveled, so we've got to keep an eye on her and not tax her too much, but this is exciting. I wasn't actually expecting any spikes from her. And then Dendrobium tetragonum variety giganteum. This is only one example of all the nodes that are showing buds. It's going to be spectacular. I do apologize for dusty leaves. I do not mess around with cleaning orchid leaves too much in my climate, in my environment, during these temperatures. So never mind the dusty leaves, but all the nodes that are anticipated to show blooms are doing exactly what they are supposed to do. And then, whew, Catacetum Orchid Glade Jack of Diamonds is going to be a jack this time around. Look at this spike. Isn't this amazing? You see, this orchid was divided and then last year she only gave me one bloom of a male kind. And now look at this spike after she has recovered into her second year after the division. We are back on track with a monstrosity of a 
a spike. <laughs> this is going to be exciting, bar any mishaps again on my part, because elbows, orchids, in and out. So keep your fingers crossed. I would love to share you Jack of Diamonds coming soon. My Vonara TLDC Fan Thursday, right on track with the blooms. The timing is absolutely perfect. It's going to be a wonderful one to have around because the pop of color that this orchid has, it's very much welcome during these darker nights. Even though the daylights are getting longer, yes, but you know, we got these gloomy days that <clears throat> even my epic Catrandra, Rene Marquez, crossed with a Martinata, I am very happy to see it's forming a spike as well. These take forever to develop, so I hope, <laughs> I hope by the time that these orchids get to live outside again, that this one will be in bloom. So once again, subscribe to the channel, because that could be the end of March, mid-April. That's how long it takes for these spikes to actually develop. And of course, good old Dendrobium antenatum. Can't not say anything about this orchid has given me such joy throughout these months. It is also actively growing new growth. It is now a mealybug magnet because apparently nature doesn't have much to offer. My Dendrobium antenatum seems to have it all, so I've been dabbling away with some garlic alcohol on her on a regular basis just to keep her somewhat safe. And that honeysuckle fragrance, oh, it's just like oh, spring is so around the corner. I feel like going for a little jog or a limp or whatever, but anyway, and meeting it and dragging it into the patio, you know, something along those lines. What greets me in the morning and keeps me company at night when I'm working at my desk because I'm Grey Com Crestwood, tomorrow's star is in bloom. And I have the notes of very clean, fresh linen soap with vanilla and a tinge of jasmine that permeates my surroundings as I'm working in the dark. Just so nice to feel her presence while I'm working, cheering me on with her gorgeous fragrance. <laughs> and she also has that welcoming fragrance when I come downstairs in the morning. You can still smell the aroma of her in the grow space. She's not to be outdone though, because Angraecum sesquipedale variety Bossere is also coming into bloom. <sighs> Just want to show you that I'm on spur watch. <laughs> Those spurs are just getting longer and longer and I really don't want them to get kinked or caught up in anything. <laughs> it's all very, very dicey and the orchids have already been flipped to face me in the growth space. It's all, ah, uh, it's a little bit too close for comfort everything, but to get them to this point, it's super exciting every year. And then we have Phalaenopsis pulsation suppressor in Spike. She is representative of all the Phalaenopsis that are in Spike, the complex hybrids. So I do have this beautiful Spike that I'm hopefully not going to snap. And right next to her actually is my Zygopetalum trozy blue. The longest Spike ever, not to say that this is the target, that you should grow such long Zygopetalum Spikes, but this is obviously a Spike that is reaching for the light. But it is the second one out of the same growth, whereas the previous spike was chomped off by a creature. So now she threw out a second spike on that same growth. That is a first, has never happened to me, and she has blessed us with the biggest blooms. I have seven blooms in total on this spike. For me, that's a first, and here I've captured an image of finally the chartreuse green contrast to the Bordeaux spotting that she has on her petals and sepals, because usually if I'm outdoors, the camera changes that chartreuse green into yellow. This is her true coloring. Love this. Of course, now I've got the vanilla and all the jasmine going on with the angrecoids, and to the right of them, I've got the cinnamon, the sugar, the spice from the zygopetalum. Despite me hating having these orchids in the grow space, I am thoroughly enjoying all the fragrances. <laughs> Very excited to show you the Phalaenopsis Schilleriana spike. She's coming along really nicely. I have lost one leaf so far, and that is where it seems to be staying, just one leaf. But this spike is coming along beautifully, and eventually we shall add to the mix of fragrances the rose smell, the gorgeous rose smell of the Schilleriana. And sticking with orchids that I'm excited to see somewhat holding on. <laughs> This is my Leodora Sweet Memory. She's got her new spike growing as well. I'm gonna have a few blooms from her and I'm very excited to say that I'm not seeing any winter stress struggle from her 
So I'm keeping my fingers crossed, and if you would as well keep your fingers crossed that she is going to hold on. I need another, yeah, mid-April is when I can feel a little comfortable that we've come through without any major damage or loss to these novelty hybrid species Phalaenopsis. But look, that is exciting. At least I can show you that both of us, the sweet memory and I, we're trying. We're trying our best to get blooms to you. Paphiopedalum delinatii, look at that. Look at that little, little protrusion there from the fan. Yeah, we're going to see those darting blooms again. And you know what excites me about this visual is that she is now a reliable bloomer because she was a first time bloomer in 2023. And then you always wonder, can you repeat the trick? <laughs> Yes, it would appear so. Fingers crossed, one doesn't do any damage. <laughs> Excited to show you the Tolumnia Spotty. She was gifted to me by Anonymous. Look, growing a spike, considering all the headaches I have had with my Tolumnias. Well, it's not like I can't grow them. It's just I have to keep them free of scale and then they will grow just fine. So I'm gonna look forward to that coming up soon. And here's my blooming alley, part of it, well, where the blooms are. I have the Sergio Ara Yokosuka story on the right, those beautiful spring-like invitational colored blooms. I love, love that combination. The Dendrobium Nafitz Alex Poli that's keeping me company as well. All the five spikes have now bloomed out. I've had to remove one that was a very early bloomer, but you can see there's also a new growth coming during the winter season and it's looking absolutely stunning. I'm keeping that thrips free as best as possible. And then tucked in the bottom down in the corner is my Dendrobium Roy Tokunaga. So it's a very minimalistic blooming alley, but if I were to put all the blooms together, you would know there was a lot more going on than it would appear. But many of the orchids that are in spike, they have to stay outside because that is where they're developing their spike. If I bring them in, we could have problems. And an orchid that I'm not moving from the shelf because <laughs> dingaling is a little clumsy and I have made a mess of it in 2023. But my Bulbophyllum plumatum is pushing out a spike and the buds aren't looking too shabby either. So we'll just keep it there. We'll just keep it there. And then very carefully remove it from the shelf so that we can see the blooms. <laughs> so let's head on back outside again because my Rincolalia digbiana is enjoying some much, much needed sunshine. She has two growths. The second lead is lagging behind. I don't think we're gonna see any blooms on that one, but at least it'll produce roots for us. But <laughs> do you see the chubbiness? Do you see the chubbiness in that? She's excite, excite because I love this orchid so, so much. She ranks on one of the top five in my collection, along with my Rincolalia Catlia Golf Green Hair Pig. Ah, <laughs> you see that chubbiness as well? So the Digbiana is in the parentage of the Golf Green Hair Pig, and usually they don't synchronize. Usually I've got the hair pig blooming before the Digbiana blooms, but I think that those sheaths have equal chubbiness, so we may get a synchronized blooming out of these two for once. And my little weirdo, <laughs> the last spike has opened up some blooms. Well, you can see the one that I focused on. It's trying to do an impersonation of a Pleurothalus bloom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I had to throw that in because cute. <laughs> it gets an A for effort. <laughs> and down below, well, Cousin It is not happy with me, so we haven't put his glasses on. He would rather not have any attention at the moment at all. He is losing a lot of leaves that shouldn't be lost, but he didn't deny me a beautiful bloom show. I'm showing his bald side, so if you give me a moment, he does have a somewhat prettier side. I'm just gonna turn him around. A sort of prettier side. You can see that he's been struggling and that was me not fertilizing enough. So this is the side with the more shade to it, less blooms and the sunny side on the other side. Well, you saw that. I owe cousin it a massive apology, but there's no way I wouldn't do a video like this without showing him to you. I have already been very diligent about giving him some calcium. I have also removed all the maidenhair fern, so he has been considerably fussed over and I hope that things will be much better when he starts with new growths. We shall see. Encyclia Garciana is still doing her thing. 
still giving me that beautiful talcum powder fragrance. It was her first stint outside since the winter started. I had to do a once over mealybug check because that is the attraction for this orchid. The mealybugs, so between the Dendrobium antenatum and Garciana alba, they're keeping me busy and they do like their alcohol. <laughs> but to finish off, I am going to love and leave you with the beautiful spikes of my Colmenara Maasai Red that are just opening the blooms. It's going to get faster and faster. Unfortunately, my thing is always with this orchid, if we want to have a little gripe and a moan, the beautiful white pollinia here that you see, it is very volatile and even with the slightest breeze it'll pop off. So unfortunately, I never managed to get a row of white dots all the way down the spike. It is attracting aphids, so I am here with a paintbrush sometimes, just brushing the buds off. It's just a little bit annoying to say the least because the lip is so velvety that if you interfere with the lip, then you are going to destroy the visual of the lip. But while there's still buds, and where the aphids are, I come in with a paintbrush every morning. So what I see now has actually either returned or is what I missed and has now crawled out of the crevices. Fun fact, they go into these little cracks right here. You can see the opening there. And then when the bud opens, you see all these little green spots on the lip, which is a real nuisance. <laughs> Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed having a look-see with me. What's to come, what we've got going on right now. Let me tell you, I appreciate your time. I appreciate your support. Thank you so very much for watching. If you've watched all the way to the end, I get to wish you a beautiful day. On the condition though that you stay safe. Take care, bye.